That is probably the saddest death in the entire series, and one of the darkest because like Phoenix goes into detail about how she was still warm and then eventually she became cold. This is probably also the longest I've gone without talking and the longest I've gone without saying my intro, so uh, hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games that today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and finished up our first case, and in this episode, it's been a month since then, and unfortunately, Mia Fey has been murdered. And so now it's our job to go ahead and see if we can find out who did it, and how and why. Anyways, so here's our new uh, little thing here, our new mechanic, the examination feature. Where basically, you press examine, and then on the bottom screen, you'll get a reticle. And, uh, when you go over something you can examine, then the examine button will appear at the bottom, or you could just press A. Chief, it's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here, she was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. Hmm. There are some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of glass light of the glass light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm? Piece of paper. Must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? And so yeah, you examine a bunch of stuff, and then more stuff will pop up. A word is written in blood on the scrap of paper. Maya. Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store, dated yesterday. So we got the receipt, and it says Maya, which was the name in that phone call we heard earlier. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police, and find out what that girl was doing here. So yeah, we could call the police, but let's go ahead and examine more stuff. Uh, we have the broken glass over here. Some shards of glass are scattered on the floor. They seem to be the remains of a glass light stand. You got this chair. Chief's chair. A simple, functional design. Feels pretty good to sit in, too. I like to imagine that he, like, as he says that, he's actually sitting in the chair. And, and it's knocked over, so I imagine him just, like, sitting in it, but, like, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but... We got the window here. There's a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel. A nice, luxurious place. That's a pun and a half. We have the thinker. It's encrusted with dried blood. How ironic that this became the murder weapon. Again. So also a new function is that on the bottom screen, there's this button down here, and if you press it, you can go over to the other side of a room. This isn't always an option, it's rarely an option. But whenever you see it down there, make sure to use it because then you can see an entirely different angle on the crime scene. Check out the bookshelf. All the chief's important documents are packed in here. This is where she filed her case recordings and recent rulings. Surprisingly, the chief was never good with machines. About all she used this PC for was email. She picked up this ancient model at some garage sale for practically nothing. The Fay & Co. Ledger Book. Everything is written in the Chief's ultra-neat handwriting. It's a small office, but it makes a good bit of money. So finally, after all that examining, we're gonna go ahead and check out the telephone. Right, I'd better call the police. Hmm? That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. Looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Please, come quick! What was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. 
I'll be honest, that terrified me as a kid. Uh, let's see. The phone receiver is missing a few screws. I'd better not use it. Is there a... Also, if you press L, then you can move around like this. Let's see. If we examine Mia again. It's painful to look, but I have to for Mia's sake. Looks like she was hit on the head with a blunt weapon. She probably died instantly. So now that we've done that, there's also another option, move. And so this allows you to go from place to place. Let's go to the Fane Co. Law Offices. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on the sofa. Uh-oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay. I work here. Maya. Maya Fay. Maya... Fay? Maya? So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should so show her the receipt? I never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. Let's go ahead and examine more stuff for now. If the bookshelf. You couldn't cram more legal books in here even if you wanted to. Few can gaze upon the shelves without feeling insignificant. Door. The door to the chief's office. It's slightly open. I'd better not touch the, the doorknob. But yeah, there's a giant painting over here. A large painting. I guess you'd call this modern art. I, on the other hand, called a mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, we have the desk. The reception desk. I usually sit here. We have the sofa. This sofa is for clients. It's leather. A real luxury model. And then the writing desk. A small writing desk cluttered with office supplies. So here's two more things. We have talk, which allows us to speak to whoever's in the room with us. That sounds like some sort of like spiritual like Ouija board stuff, but no, I'm just talking about like whoever's sitting next to us we can talk to. She seems to be in shock. I don't want to disturb her, but I have to know. Um, excuse me? Can you tell me what happened? I came in. The room was dark. And sis. Sis. So she was already dead. So you're the chief's sister. I'm her younger sister. And you were here visiting? This late at night? Yes. She said she wanted me to keep some evidence for her. Evidence? Yes. It was that clock. It was the thinker. And our last new thing over here is present, where basically we could show whoever we're talking to a bunch of different objects. Uh, note if you're playing this game or any uh, subsequent Ace Attorney games, always present your attorney's badge to everyone you meet because you'll eventually get some funny answers. I'm sorry, I've never seen that before. Isn't your sister a lawyer? Anyways, we want to go ahead and present the receipt to her. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. That's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. Why would Sis write my name? Uh-oh. Now I've done it. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! Alright, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe? What an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a person say they saw Moida. It must have been that woman I saw. I'll, I'll go ahead and have to turn my voice down when it comes to these parts. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, K. Okay? Great. Just great. Maya. Wait, she wouldn't have... Nah. Whoa! Excuse me! Eek! This word Maya here mean anything to you? Um, that, that, that's my name. Whoa! <laughs> okay, my voice can't, like, keep doing that stuff. The victim here drew this here note in her own blood, see? 
With a dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. C killer? I'm not. Case closed. You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. What? I can't grow go as gravelly as I want it to. Not gravelly, but. Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out till the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6th, 9.07 a.m. Detention Center Visitor's Room. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh, it's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's just what I wanted to talk to you about. I'd better give it to her straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes, I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never going to believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I, I never thought... It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha! Huh. So he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is... experience. Huh. Sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get in trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to trouble you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit and watch when I think of the person who did this to Mia. I know. So yeah, now it's time to uh, talk to Maya. But first of all, in the detention center, I know this is like emotional whiplash, but you could get some funny responses whenever you examine the camera and security guard. This is like the first case where you can examine stuff, so it's just setting up like the jokes and then later we'll get the variations and stuff like that. So smile for the camera and then we have the guard. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He hasn't moved an inch. A real pro, this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and talk to Maya. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. So you're an acolyte. A, uh, medium in training. That's right. Fae family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fae family? So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I... I had no idea. Hmm. Wait. What? So you're a real honest-to-goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that? Yes. In training. Well, can't you contact me a spirit then? We can just ask her who killed her. I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that would be too easy. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in the case? Um, right. She said something about that. I remember. Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her own voice? Yes. I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it? Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. 
so you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right. Oh, I just remembered. That detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. Maya's memo added to the court record. Um, huh? Something the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? I, I see. Don't worry. Leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 o'clock this afternoon. And visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. Also, I think there's a slight glitch here where... Uh, it for some reason shows this bit of dialogue before it's supposed to happen, so I'll just skip that and come back to that later. Never seen that before. Hey, how about the murder weapon? <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the murder weapon. Poor sis. Hmm, better not ask her about this now. Yeah, you think? I wanted to ask you about your cell phone. That detective took it when they brought me in. So, Gumshoe took it. I'll have to try to get it back next time I see him. And so, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and not only get Maya's cell phone back from the detective, but we're also going to stop by that uh, famous lawyer's place and see if he'll defend Maya. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye